Hey trackers. So I'm revisiting a site that uh, was shown in a previous video and uh, I wanted to point out that right here at the end of the stick is the uh, mountain lion scrape that I showed in a previous video. Now I had a trail camera here and the trail camera captured a mountain lion with her yearling and they came back to this site revisited the same site. They did not mark where this scrape is, but right over here the female mountain lion deposited a scat. Now what she did is she scraped right here first in the sawdust from the log, and this log has been uh, worked by black bears and pileated woodpeckers until it's just soft material. There's not much substance left to it. It's very just uh, easy to dig in. So she scraped right here, placed a leg up here on this log, and I'll show you the scratch marks from that in a moment, but she placed her leg on the log and another foot here, deposited a scat right here. Now they left, the mother and the uh, the young, young one, and two nights later a gray fox came and deposited this scat that you see here on top of the mountain lion scat. So I'm going to focus a little more closely so that we can examine this in more detail, but I wanted to show you first the overall view of where we are. So this is the old mountain lion scrape that at this point is at least a month old. So they have not returned to place any more sign here, but they did uh, come back and deposit a scat there. So I'm going to show you that next. Okay, now here are the claw marks that she made when she placed her foot on this log. This is a three inch ruler. Note the scrape right here. There's a scratch right here. One right here. You can see one here with a little bit of uh, sawdust right there. This one is kind of long right here. So she put her foot up there and then adjusted the placement and replaced it before she deposited the scat. So this is the log. Um, it sits about a foot off the ground right here. It's not flat, it's not laying on the ground. So I just moved it so you can see that this is actually up in the air. So she placed her left hind foot on this log and readjusted it several times, you'll see in the video. And that's where these claw marks came from. So these are uh, from the female mountain lion who deposited the scat. Okay, so now we're looking at the the scats from the top and I wanted to show you this one here is the gray foxes scat. It's really runny and that's typical of gray foxes in this area uh, usually during the winter and early spring months and I haven't figured out why that is. It may be due to their diet. Um, something in their diet being more moist than what they eat in the summertime, but I'm not sure about that. So uh, the gray fox was documented on the camera, uh, by the trail camera, um, depositing this scat on top of the mountain lion scat. So gray foxes are well known for that behavior. It's called overmarking. And uh, there was a study I read that was kind of interesting where gray foxes were documented rolling on the scats of mountain lions. And the theory was that they are acquiring the scent of the larger carnivore in order to make themselves seem more scary to other animals. And and uh, I think that was a pretty cool study. I'll have to link to it in the comments so you can see and uh, read it for yourself. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's a behavior where they rolled on the scats of the mountain lion. But uh, in this case, it actually deposited its own scat on top of that of the mountain lion, which is that behavior called overmarking. They do this to coyote scats, bear scats, uh, mountain lion scats, and you name it. Um, they're also very well known for marking on top of objects that people use, so tractor seats and uh, kids' toys and things like that that they find out in the yard or decks. Um, so anyway, that's the gray fox and its behavior around the scat here. Um, the main scat is this of the mountain lion right here, these three larger pieces. And these are made up of um, uh, fur from prey animals. There's also some bones in here, which you can see right there. I'm not going to break these apart right now because I want to do a little experiment and 
and see how aging happens with these scats. But I wanted to show you that there are indeed bones in here and uh, chunks, chunks of bone and a lot of fur. Um, this fur looks like deer fur, which is their primary prey animal ar around here in this area. That looks like a piece of uh, sawdust. <laughs> the medium that it was deposited in is sawdust from a log that's been decomposing here for a long time. And the log has been uh, knocked apart by both bears and woodpeckers. Um, but the mountain lion came along and deposited a scat here in this. There looks like there's some dung beetles down here. Oops, I took their food. So I'm going to place that back so that they can have their food. Um, but I wanted to show you that the contents are uh, fur and bones. Now this one is not super dense, which is a characteristic of mountain lion scats usually and bobcat scats um, because felines have a very efficient digestive system and they, it takes the moisture out of the scats. So this one might have been, um, she was feeding on what was left of a carcass and it's just the bones and the, and the fur at this point, not much meat in it. But uh, this was definitely a mountain lion scat. It was documented by a trail camera as she deposited it. It is about an inch in diameter. Um, maybe a little bit more on that, that piece. But uh, there is a um, segmented appearance to it, which helps you tell it's a mountain lion. It also has this coating on the outside. This, uh, I'll bring this one back over. But the uh, note, the outside is very smooth with this coating on it. And that's something that you see in feline scats. Um, this outer sort of mucusy coating. And uh, in one of the pictures, you can really see the mucus in it. Um, but it's basically just compacted fur. And it's really densely compacted. So, you know, they're not really easy to break apart normally. This one is because it's just, seems like all it is is fur. There's no meat content in that except a few bones. Um, so they usually have kind of a blunt appearance to them, but they're also will be tapered ends. Now the tapered end usually is the last to leave the anus um, because it, the muscles squeeze that off and, and this is the last part that dropped. So the first part that dropped would be the one with the blunt end like this. There is a name for that. I can't recall it right now. There are actually people that study this stuff have a name for the blunt end that comes out first and there's a name for the tapered end that comes out last. Um, if I can find that information I'll post it on the video so you can see. Um, but I don't know those off the top of my head. Um, you'd have to be a scatologist I guess. Scat being what we're studying here. Um, scat can tell you a lot about the animals, not only their diet, um, they can do DNA studies on these things to determine the individuals. Um, they can also determine species using the DNA. Um, so there's a lot that can be done with this. There is a um, a program called, I think it's uh, Canines for Conservation or something like that, where they train dogs to go out on the landscape and find scats for scientists because these are not easy to find. Mountain lion scats are not just deposited willy-nilly wherever, you know, wherever they are on trails. These guys are are a, a very secretive animal. And oftentimes these are not deposited directly on a trail. This one happened to be in a place where there was a previous scrape, as I showed you. And uh, mountain lions are known to use community scrape sites where multiple animals utilize the same site to leave their scent behind. So this is a, a scent marking behavior and it's something that this species uses to communicate amongst each other. They are a wide-ranging animal, so they don't really uh, encounter each other in person that often. So they use scent to communicate. So their urine, their scats, the scrapes that they make with their feet, uh, the scrapes allow the, the glands on the bottom of the feet to deposit scent and so on. So these animals are very scent oriented as is the gray fox who deposited the one on top of it. Um, most animals are oriented towards scent and they will investigate the scents of others and it's just a way of communicating um, out in the woods. So uh, this is the uh, scat made by the female mountain lion. She had a youngster with her. Um, I don't know how old it was. It still had some spots on its arms. I'll have to look up exactly 
you know, when they lose those spots. But it looked like a yearling. I don't think it was this year's cub because it's pretty well almost grown. It's almost the size of the the uh, mother mountain lion there. So I'm going to show you some tracks over here. The the juvenile went over to a spring and stepped into the mud and left some tracks. And I will show you those in a moment. Um, but I hope you've learned a little bit about scats by examining this and uh, be able to tell that this is a mountain lion scat. Now the other thing that this could be is a coyote. Um, coyotes often have scats that have pieces of bone in them, they have fur in them, and they're twisted. Now this one doesn't appear as twisted as a canine scat is normally. This, this being the twisting appearance right here, most of the twisting in this is inside where the fur is all twisted. On canine scats, the outer appearance is really twisted like that usually. Um, so that's more the appearance of a canine scat rather than this smooth outer appearance that you see on those pieces right there. If I found this scat without the trail camera confirming it to be a mountain lion, I would have some doubts because it's not that firm. So I might doubt this scat as being from a mountain lion. I might even say it could be from a coyote. So um, if I was going to call this one, I would just say carnivorans because it could be either one. But uh, in fact, in this case, we do know what it is. And I'll include that video so you can see. The, the behavior of the animals is pretty interesting in the video. And um, you can see how first the mountain lion comes along, does its business, makes a little scrape here. And uh, then the fox comes along. Now the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this uh, substrate is very loose and easy to dig in. And that's something that I've noticed with my own cat is they like loose substrates like uh, dry sand as opposed to wet sand or uh, the, they'll use a mole mound or something to deposit their scats because it's easy to dig in and make a scrape. And that's something I noticed with my domestic cats. And it seems like that might come into play a little bit here with this mountain lion because this substrate is so easy to dig in. It's just very loose stuff. Um, and it may be that that holds scent better because it's got all these little nooks and crannies in, the, in this material that may hold scent better. So it could be that this was a specifically chosen spot to deposit this scat just because the material could hold scent better. That's a theory. I don't know for sure, but I thought I'd mention it. All right, let's go see the tracks. Okay, here we are looking at this track. Um, and this is the track of the smaller juvenile mountain lion that was accompanying the female that made that scat. Here is... Um, the leading toe right here. So there are two tracks here. I think this one is his front or his hind right here on top of the front. I'm calling it a male because in the video I saw a spot below the tail, but I could be wrong. Um, but usually the males have a spot below their tail and the resolution of the video as you will see is not that great. So I'm calling it a male, but I, I could be wrong. Anyway, this is the juvenile track. Uh, front foot was here, and he stepped on top of it with his hind foot here. You can see this toe is ahead of the other toes on this track. So this one is is uh, toe number two because toe number one is missing on the hind foot, but toe two, three, four, and five, and this toe is ahead of that toe. So you draw your imaginary line right across here, across those two toes, and this toe is ahead of that one making this toe three being the leading toe and that makes this the left hind track um, because your toe three is the same as your um, middle finger so that would be equivalent to this toe on the mountain line excuse me that one right there um, here's the pad now the, <laughs> sorry about the the stick there it's shaking um, but the the leading edge of that pad is relatively flat it is bilobed but hard to see in this substrate because the mud stuck to the foot. You can see the edge of the pad here, how it comes and curves around. And so the pad is right here. Here's the toe number two, three, four, and five. The front foot was here and then it got stepped on. As you'll see in the video, he kind of walked in here, made a turn around, and then 
came out. This is an old spring area with no water in it right now. He made a turn, walked out, and then jumped over a log in a rather playful manner, I think, chasing the the mother lion. Anyway, this is the track left by a juvenile mountain lion. And for size comparison, let's place this here. There's a three inch ruler for size comparison. So if this is a male, he has some growing to do. It's a young, young cat. Um, so definitely not full grown, but close to size of the adult. As you'll see when you look at the video that I'm going to show next, which is actually them doing everything that I've explained in this video so far, you'll see that the young one is close to size of the adult, but not quite yet. So, um, maybe going to be on his own this year. Anyway, that's the track. That's a beautiful track in mud. If that, the heel had shown up a little bit better, I'd probably consider making a casting out of this, but I don't have any plaster on me right now. I wish I did. But I hope you enjoy that track and, and are learning a little bit about the biology of uh, not only mountain lions, but gray foxes out here in the woods and of northwestern California.